So, <clears throat> good afternoon to all of you. Um, again, thank you for coming. Today we are in our 20th meeting uh, in our discussion of Wopi Gita. And we will be today studying verse number 18, penultimate verse of the Gopi Gita. So we are almost reaching the end of our study, but it will be extended a little bit more since there are some afterthoughts that will come naturally in the Bhagavad itself. So this is why we are not finishing nor today nor tomorrow, but next week with some other meditations. But today let's go to verse 18. And of course, before that, let's make a brief summary of what we were uh, seeing yesterday, verse number 17. Rahasi sambidam ritchayodayam rahasitananam uh, prema bhikshanam brihadurasriya bhikshadamati muhuratispriham muhyati mana. The gopis say there to Sri Krishna, thinking of the intimate conversations that we had with you in secret, mm, your smiling face, your loving glance, and your broad chest, mm, the abode of Lakshmi, all of which awaken lust in our hearts. Our minds are continuously bewildered due to an intense longing for you. So, according to Sridhar Swami, this verse and the one we will be studying today had to do with the gopis repeating in a more intense way, the way that before, that the cause of their pain uh, is connected, of course, with Krishna, but with the different like stimulants that they receive in Purva Rag in the previous moments before the official meeting. So in verse 10, something similar was said, but now in verse 17, of course, we are finding an upgraded expression of that, much more intense emotionally surcharged. So this verse has a very general, a general meaning, which is the one we have just shared, which speaks of the gopis being the ones agitated. I'm asking Krishna, please help to relieve this agitation. And this could be applicable to certain type of gopis, certain group of gopis, hmm, such as Chandravali, right wing gopis of the Dakshina Bhav. We also explain a deeper hmm, meaning to the verse connected more to the other types of gopis, hmm, Radha, go, Radha group, Radha's group, and uh, which speaks about Krishna's being the one originally agitated and the gopis being agitated as a byproduct of that, by being fully identified with Krishna's desire. Hmm. So in this connection also, we mentioned five uh, aspects of this verse which are connected by some of our Purvacharyas with Kamadev's Cupid's five flower arrows. <clears throat> so in this, in, the, in connection to the deeper, deepest type, uh, deepest purport for this verse, we'll speak about how Krishna was affected, how Cupid affected Krishna's existence in connection to his romantic desire. So these five arrows were Rahasi Sambidam, the secret conversations, Hrichayodayam, the desire burning in Krishna's heart, Prahasitananam, Krishna's uh, eminent smile, the four is Premabhikshanam, like love filled sidelong glances, and finally Brihadura, his, his big chest, which also spoke about deep feelings. So all these for the gopis had to do with atis priha, which in this verse means excessive desire or very intense desire on the part of Krishna. So Sanatana Goswami will say, yeah, at this point, desire is at the highest stage here in the gopis, and that speaks of Krishna again. So that the gopis are mentioning all these ideas. So also, with, in in other way, the, in other way, the gopis are having full compassion for Krishna, fully being empathic with Krishna's uh, transcendental divine suffering and love. Hmm? To their compassion means they are making his feelings their own. Hmm? I'm seeing how to remedy that by appearing there, running after the sound of the flute, hearing Krishna's call, an emergency call, and they're being there ready for doing whatever may be necessary. Hmm? So that's the conclusion of all verses and of this verse in particular, the gopis are asking Krishna to appear before us so we can save your life, basically. Because you are now on the edge of death. Now we also explain this word of ananga that is given to Krishna in the context of he being cupidized, if you will, 
an angesene for Cupid without bodily limbs, but in this case it applies to Krishna being affected by Cupid and having no bodily consciousness, not because of a zoom, falling into a zoom and being just in, in, in necessity of being rescued. So the gopis are here now singing this song and begging to him, appear for us so we can save your life. Although, again, they are asking Krishna, appear before us so you can save our lives. Actually, to save the gopis' life implies that the gopis may save Krishna's life. One thing is implied in the other. So these are some little brief words connected to the 17th verse, which we discussed yesterday. And now we will share with you in the chat section the verse we will be studying today, which is verse number 18. There it is. So I will recite it. And the one who like can join me as well. Brajabano Kasham Bhyati Rangate Brijita Hantrialam Bishwa Mangalam Tyajamanakchanas Tats Prihatmanam Sajana Hribrujam so the translation of this verse says, O beloved, your appearance vanquishes the distress of those living in Raja's forests, and in every way is extremely auspicious for the whole world. Our minds long for your association. Please give to us in charity just a bit of that medicine which can cure your dear ones. Mm. So here the gopis are mm, singing their penultimate song and saying to Krishna, Braja Vanu Kasham Bhakti Rangate. Let's go to the word by word meaning before some considerable unfolding is there. So we may take it may take some extra minutes. Let's see today. Because as as, as the more intense the song becomes more things are dirt to unpack. So, <laughs> so Brajavana Kasham Bhakti Rangate. Brajavana. Brajavana means in the in the van in the forest of Raj. In the, in the forest of Raj. Okasham. Brajavana Okasham. Okasham means for those who dwell. For those who dwell in the forest of Raj. Bhakti Anga Te. Te means your. Bhakti means appearance. So your appearance. Anga. Anga is and addressing to Krishna, which means dear one. Later we will explain a more detailed meaning of all these things, mm -hmm. word by word, but general idea of word by word. Bhakti Rangate. Oh dear one, your appearance for those who dwell in the forest of Raj. What's the result of that? We go to the second line. Brijina Hantri Alam Mangalam. On one side, Hantri Alam. Uh, sorry, Brijina Hantri. Hantri means the agent of destruction and bridging means distress. Mm -hmm. So your appearance for those in the forest of Raj, for those of the forest of Raj, dis destroys all distress. Hantri alam bishwa mangalam. Alam means extremely so. So that's applicable to the destruction of the distress and to the bishwa mangalam words, which means all auspicious. Bishwa means universe, which implies like all, and be mangalam has to do with auspiciousness. So your appearance is both all auspicious and all destroying of distress, if you will. <clears throat> so after this, it comes the request of the gopis, in this case, in the third line, they say, Tyaja manakchanas manam. So Tyaja means to release, sometimes means to give up, but it's a way of releasing manak. Manak means a little. So please release Tyaja, a little manak. Cha na, na means to us, and cha means and. So, and please release to us a little. Tuat sprihat manam. Tuat means for you, and spriha means hankering or intense desire. So, we are having intense hankering for you. So, due to that, please release a little. A little of what? Well, that will be further, that's further indirectly implied here, so eventually we'll unpack that. Atmanam is 
whose minds are filled with spriha, sprihatmanam. So please release a little bit of that for us, to us who are, who are filled, whose minds are filled with spriha, with hunkering, again, with desire. They have desire because Krishna has desire. And the last line of the verse is Sajjana Hridurudam Shanyani Shudanam. Who are, who are we? The Gopi says Sajjana. Sa means your own, and Jana means devotees. We are your own devotees, your own people. We belong to you. And Hrit Rujam. Rujan means disease, and Hrit means heart. And Yat Nishudanam. Nishudanam has to do with that which counteracts, as we hear of Kamsa Nishudanam, like, like this. Krishna's an enemy. Destroy of the enemies. Yat nishudanam. Yat means which is and nishudanam, which counteracts. So please release to us a little bit of that thing which will counteract the disease in us, your devotees, your own people. And of course, that releasing has to do with his reappearance in a very particular way. So that's the general idea of the verse. <clears throat> and remember, in connection to the previous one, just to recollect for a moment, in the previous verse, the Gopis told Krishna, we have, we have seen these five symptoms in you, these five arrows of Kamadev expressing <coughs> themselves in your different ecstatic manifestations in your body, in your face. So we know that some desire is burning in your heart. So if Krishna may have asked them, so how do you know about that? Of course, the Gopis had replied, well, by all these different things by our confidential discussions in solitary places, by your face, which is smiling in a special way, by your loving glances. And that's why we have came here, to give you relief from calm, from the desire burning in your heart. We are bewildered in, your, in, in our concern to pacify you. We decide to pacify you, we decide to give you relief. So that was a little bit the idea of the previous verse. So here, in the second verse, which is connected to the other one, as we mentioned, this is a group of two verses according to Sridhar Swami. In the second verse, the gopis continue to express this same mood here. The common meaning, again, of which is seen in, in the translation we have already shared. But now we will explore the deeper implication, the deeper meaning of this shloka. And again, in this verse, we find some elements that were somehow or other present in different verses some ideas, but again, here we are in 18th verse. So Gopi Gita is almost to explode, to finish, to reach its highest, highest peak. So whatever seems to be said here that is similar to previous verses are actually presented here in an intensified, intensified way, presentation. So the Gopis are saying to him, here, to Krishna here, you should give us a, a little something Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur presents like this in his Sarartha Darshini. You should give a little of that something to us without being miserly. And that's important point. So Krishna wants to know a little of that something. What, what thing is that specifically? Krishna wants to extract the ultimate <laughs> version of Rasa, the ultimate updated version present there. What's that little something? The word manak means little something. So, of course, the idea is that secret, the, the Gopi is speaking in dark language, very poetically, that secret mess, medicine which drives away the diseases of the hearts of your people. In a poetic way, in Ayurvedic terms, as they did before also. So the Gopis imply with all this, they, they do not need to say that clearly, overtly, as we say yesterday. The Gopis imply, you know what it is. That's the subtle intention of the Gopi saying, give us a little of that something. I like complain, you really know what's that something. So there's no necessity to openly state that. Mm -hmm. But eventually, according to Vishwanath, th what they said clearly said, the medi what that, what's that something? The medicinal lotus flower of your hands, mm -hmm. which alleviate the disorders of the breasts of persons who belong to you. Mm -hmm. Again, in a very indirect way, the gopis are presenting what they will like. No? Of course, the breast means the hearts. And so the gopis are speaking in Ayurvedic terms, please bring the medicinal lotus flower of your lotus hands, which will alleviate the disorders. No? In Ayurvedic, they speak a lot about bata disorder and so on. So we have a disorder in our hearts, in our breasts. 
now uh, in, in this case will be a pita disorder because it's a disorder of fire <laughs> no, we are we are blazing we are being yeah, blazing in the fire force fire of separation and that actually disorder started in you a pita disorder started in you mm -hmm. so the medicine is Krishna's lotus hand if you will now if you if we manage to get you the gopis in play here in very indirect terms again if we manage to get you to place your hand on our breasts then your life they imply will be saved by the fulfillment of your desire in that way so in connection to the previous verse the gopis know your life needs to be saved <clears throat> or let's say krishna needs to be saved in as, as the gopis need to be saved both of them need to be saved in the context of their separation from one another so that's like the more the deeper meaning of the verse of course now i'm saying that from the very beginning but now we'll let's unpack every single word of the verse in a deeper way and again conclude by returning to this deeper meaning of the verse of what the gopis mean here by indirectly say release a little of that something <clears throat> So the verse begins saying, Brajavano Kasam Bhyakti Angate. So we already spoke about, oh dear, your appearance in, for, for those who do dwell in the forest of Braj. So what's the meaning of this in a deeper way? Now we have the word Bhyakti. Bhyakti here is described as appearance, which is generally speaking, according to this verse, what the gopis want Krishna to reappear in their midst. But also, <clears throat> one of the many meanings of the word byakti mm -hmm. well, has to do with manifest. No? Byakta, abyakta, you have heard about this. So the gopis, in a more subtle way, they are implying here, in connection also to the previous verse, they say your inner condition, which is abyakta, is inner and manifest, is manifest, byakta, by these five symptoms that they mentioned in the previous verse, these five arrows of Cupid impacting in you. So we know, we know that you are overwhelmed by come to meet with us, with desire to meet with us. Mm -hmm. So when we see your desire, as we already explained, this inspired come in our own hearts as well. Mm -hmm. So some examples sometimes are given to illustrate this idea. For example, if there is a, a, a flood in a, in a main river, all the tributaries that flow into the main river will also flood, mm -hmm. because, and the flood will spread everywhere. So similarly, the, the idea of the analogy is that the flood of calm, the gopis say to Krishna, has entered your heart and made it burn. It's a, it's a burning flood. <laughs> and the gopis say, when we recognize that flooding, that burning, by seeing its many symptoms, Bhaktir, all this manifestation, it also were flooded and came to our hearts. So now we all also have, we also and always have a burning sensation in our hearts. And we are thinking, how can we devise a way to pacify your continually inflamed calm? Because again, the byproduct of that will be that's coming to us. So the Gopis are implying this here. We have become excessively absorbed in this thought, like obsessed in, with this thought about how we can pacify this flooding in your heart, this flooding of calm, this flooding of fire this pita disorder, however you may like to call it, mm -hmm. poetically, algebraically, whatever. The gopis say, we have become obsessed, excessively absorbed in this thought, and thus our affection has increased. Affliction and affection, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's a particular type of affectionate affliction. So the affection of the gopis have increased to such heights, their compassion, as we say yesterday, mm -hmm. that their hearts are breaking into pieces now. They have become so ultra sensitive in connection to what's going on in Krishna's heart that their own heart has become so, so vulnerable in this moment. So, so that's one implication of the word bhakti that generally could be translated as appearance. But here we understand what the gopis mean when they say any single word. They have many serious things to say behind that. And the whole we'll go a bit further implied, you no, know, like for example, also another idea in connection to this is a person we know this principle of Sangha, 
We are a product of the environments. So a person will be influenced by the virtues of the people with whom he lives, she lives, and we also be affected with the bad qualities. No? Both health and sickness are contagious, not only sickness, but health also. So in this case, the world will be say similarly, continuing with the idea of the calm in Krishna's heart, they say the calm, the desire in your heart has infected our hearts. And our hearts are always ablaze, like yours. So all of us have been thrown into a forest fire and not samsara precisely. Or another type of samsara, as we always say, samsara, full substance, samsara. So we, which is the burning desire in Krishna's heart, the gopis say, well, the gopis, Krishna is asking himself, how shall I get the association of the gopis? How can I obtain such sadhu sangha? And our hearts are burning with longing for you, correspondingly. So each of us are burning, is burning for the other. That's it, the present situation. Both parties are burning in connection to the other side. No? But the point of the gopis is now that you are not here, we are searching for you to give you our association. We know that will be. But again, all this is indirectly implied. Directly, it seems the gopis are asking Krishna, appear, save us, we need you, we are dying, give us your association. But in the backdrop, if you will, <laughs> the background, they are only obsessed with saving Krishna. <clears throat> Another very charming perspective that Narayan Bhatta gives in this connection of why, why the gopis are saying what they are saying, he says that the gopis, according to him, the gopis say to Krishna regarding this idea of blazing hearts, they say, when our hearts are burning, you might burn since too, you might burn too since you are there. So our hearts are burning and you are in our hearts, you are our hearts. My devotees are my heart, said Krishna, and I am the heart of my devotees. So the gopis say, we have no Paramatma, you know, Paramatma has been kicked out from a long time ago, <laughs> and only the ultimate Ishtadev is there. So for the gopis, Krishna is there. So rather things, the gopis think, we are burning, our hearts are burning, and you are our heart. So we are afraid that you may burn because of our fire. <laughs> That's another charming perspective. So because of that, the gopis are asking, give us some medicine to dispel the affliction for your sake. Again, it's not for their sake, it's for your sake. You may get burned. Of course, he's already burned. It's another way of saying, no? One, we can consider Krishna outside of the gopis' heart, if you will, burning, or Krishna inside of the gopis' heart, burning as well. But the point here is, if the gopis are asking Manak a little of any medicine, it's not to dispel their affliction, but to dispel affliction for his sake, for Krishna's sake. They are, done, they are not asking a relief for, to dispel their affliction. They are totally ready for eternal damnation, just to give one second of pleasure to Krishna, as we know. And we will see that also in next verse. Next verse, which it will be tomorrow, last verse of the Gopi Gita, will state that the, the gopis only care for Krishna. So this verse also, it's said by Narayan Bhatta, this verse and the next verse explain why the gopis' hearts are breaking. Simultaneously breaking with love and sorrow. As we say, with affection and affliction. Because a certain type of affection will take to a certain type of affliction. But that affliction is such that it will nurture affection and so on, both acting as cause and effect. So, Brajavano Kasham Bhyakti Rangate. So, we explain some words about some things about Bhyakti. Let's go to the word Anga for a moment. Now we will go to Brajavano Kasham. So, Anga, as I say, is an addressing to Krishna as overloved or dear one. It's, it's, a very, it's a very nice addressing we will find in many instances of the Bhagavad, not only in the context of romantic love, you know, Krishna also calls Anga his friends, Uddhav, and so many others. So, but it's an address that implies lots of love and affection. So here, in the particular situation, the gopis are experiencing an intense feeling of separation, as you know, and also, as a result of that, a profound humility. As we know they are ex ex exhibiting at every single step. 
And this is, it is for this reason that here they are not addressing Krishna directly by his name. They are not saying him Krishna or whatever other name, but say Anga, which is again indirect speech. So here the Gopis are addressing Krishna in full humility as their beloved Anga. Anga actually means the bodily limb. Now we have the Anga and the Angi. You have heard about this, Panchanga Bhakti, the Anga Sambhava Bhakti. So Anga means a limb. In this case, general refers to one hand, to one arm, to one leg, to one limb. So the point is, you are part of us. You are part of our body. And, and, and also the implication is that if a limb is hurt, if a bodily limb, if you hurt your hand, naturally you tend to call it close to your body if it's hurt. So in this mood, the gopis are praying to Krishna here, calling him Anga. Saying, you are our, you are our Anga, so we want to keep you close to us. Like, like a hurt, harmed limb, because we want to keep it close to us, and we know you are harmed now. You are being harassed by this fire of separation, of desire. So please come close to us. So Brajavanokasham Vyaktirangate. So Brajavanokasham, the very first words of the verse, Brajavanokasham, for those who dwell in the forest of Braj, <clears throat> uh, of course, do not only refer to the gopis, no, because not only the gopis dwell in Braj's forest, even it does not only refer to men and women, human beings in Braj, but to everyone there. The gopis imply this. They make their plight universal. Mm for a moment. So this, only, this, this also refers to cows, buffaloes, peacocks, monkeys, everything and everyone in Braj. And all creatures are included in this idea of Brajavano Kasham. So it is said that in this way that Krishna's appearance in the forest of Braj is for two purposes, as we will see in the next, li next line of the verse. To relieve distress and to give happiness to the gopis and to everyone else in Braj. And in, in their particular case, when the gopis say Brajavano Kasham, also they imply, at this time we are both Brajakas and Bonakas, which means residents of Braj, but Braj in this sense referring to the village when, where the gopis live, and Bonakas, which means dwellers of forest dwellers, which is in the outskirts of the village. So the gopis in this particular moment are both. They are not only Brajabasis, living in the village of Raj, but now they are out in the outskirts of Raj, in the midst of the forest, so they are both Brajakas and Bonakas. So the point is, since we are both in this precise moment, your Vyakti, your manifestation, your appearance will be fully fitting, because you appear for the sake of the Brajavana, Brajavanokasham. And we are both in this particular moment in a very intense way, so your appearance is most fitting. So with this they imply, Again, up here before us. <laughs> the second line of the verse say, Brijina Hantri Alam Bishma Mangalam. So that appearance, Brijina Hantri, destroy the affliction, Bishma Mangalam, is fully auspicious. So generally we explain that in general terms. So now let's go to a little bit more um, detail implication of this. So Brijina Hantri, destroying of all inauspicious. The Gopis say, your manifestation, your appearance is killing the troubles of all those who reside in the village, and even of those who reside in the woods, as they mentioned now, Braja, Bana, of the two of them, no? this idea of Brijna Hantri, destroying of Pishnas applies to Braja and Bana. So when they say your manifestation is killing all inauspicious, of course they are implying your in-manifestation is extremely inauspicious. <laughs> no? Indirectly they are saying, therefore your disappearance, is improper. Another way to say appear before us. And of course, they further qualify that by saying not only that, but your appearance has the form of utter auspiciousness, Vishwamangalam. So from the two sides, they are praising Bhaktir, the manifestation of Krishna. And they further, even further qualify that with the word alam in between Brijnahantri and Vishwamangalam. Alam. Alam means intensely. So it's connected to both points, to how intensely auspicious is Krishna's appearance and how intensely inauspicious is Krishna's disappearance. Or we can say how intensely 
Krishna destroys all in us, uh, Krishna's appearance destroys all in auspiciousness and bestows all auspiciousness. You know, so Sanskrit lends itself to all these possible applications. Hmm? But alam, intensely, excessively. So again, the gopis are presenting their excessive request. Hmm? So the gopis imply here, yes, your appearance is of course auspicious for the entire universe. <clears throat> now they will make their their case much more specific because now they spoke about the entire universe, they spoke about all the residents of Raj, but at the same time they are speaking from a very unique perspective, vantage point in their romantic uh, approach. So they say, of course, your appearance is suspicious for the entire universe. And it is true, of course, that you have appeared to take away everyone's distress, to give everyone happiness. Let's begin with that general idea of universal hmm, compassion, universal appearance. But then the gopis say, or they imply, of course, we are reading what the gopis are saying between the lines in this verse. So you are doing this in a universal level, that's okay, but this is especially applicable for, first, those who live in the forest, second, more especially for the Brajabasis, and they conclude more especially for us. Hmm who are here hunkering for you in a very extreme, special way. No? So they begin from this main idea, no? universal auspiciousness and so on, <clears throat> and how that applies to everyone, to the ones in the forest, to the ones in Braj, to the gopis. So bridging a hantrialam, Mangalam. That's some idea regarding the second line of the verse. So let's go now to the third and fourth line together. Here we will have to unpack a little bit more of content. So they say, Tyajamanakchanas Tvatsprihatmanam, third line, which means please release a little something to us whose minds are filled with hankering for you. And last line, Sajana Haridrujam Janishudanam, and counteract the disease in your devotees' hearts. So lots of indirect speech here. So some things to be unpacked. So the gopis are. <clears throat> are saying here to Krishna, please, again, give us that something that can relieve our sorrow and the burning in our hearts. So they use the word manak, something, but they are not specifying what that something is. So as we briefly mentioned in the beginning of today's class, Krishna may say to them, to them in this regard, they start to, to, to play with them, to turn their hearts and in this way to try to bring them from the indirect speech to an overtly clear petition. And so Krishna will say, well, you live in Vrindavan, you live in Braj, no? So when the demons came here, create some calamity, I kill them and I give relief to the Brajabasis. So that naturally includes you, you are Brajabasis. So why are you making a separate case for yourselves? And so Krishna is trying to take them from the general request to the specific thing that is in the Gopi's heart. So with this Krishna implies, you are asking that I release something to protect, save you, but you already have been cared for. So why are you speaking like this? Are you ungrateful maybe? You don't realize that I have protected so many times. But with this, again, in direct speech, Krishna actually is expressing his own desire, which is, I want to hear you saying clearly and openly what you want. I want to see the full blooming and unfolding of your heart. I want to, to see that, to see that content to the utmost detail, degree. So the gopis will continue saying, no, like you are so beloved to us to extreme extent. Mm? Therefore we are always thinking about you, how we can you make you, we can make you happy. Mm? This is the desire of our soul. Mm? We cannot be fully satisfied unless we can see you. We want you very close to us at all times mm? because otherwise we cannot satisfy you fully. We know that. So we want you only, you alone. Nothing else can give us relief. So our only happiness is that we are not satisfied. Our only unhappiness, sorry, is that we are not being able to fully satisfy you. So here the gopis may, may like suppose that Krishna may say to them, well, you say that you love me and you want me to be with you. And so all, all these different things and that's okay, but all Brajabasis have love and affection for me. And they are, are always praying for me 
no? to God. They're praying to me, Vishnu Narayan, to other great personality sages. They're praying, please make Krishna happy, make Krishna be protected, make Krishna be blessed. Hmm? All the Brajavasis. So what's the difference between you and all the other Brajavasis? Hmm? Krishna is taking the discussion to into more specific direction. Hmm? They want, they all, Krishna says, all the Brajavasis want to see me near them at every moment. I mean, my friends, my parents, my servants, everyone. You, okay. Like in play, you are one more of the whole group. <laughs> so they all want to please me. So what is the difference between you and them? What more do you want? What more do you want? So Krishna wants to know that more. <laughs> so till now, the point is that the gopis have kept their desire hidden somehow or other in their hearts. But Krishna wants to see it openly. But it cannot be seen openly. That's it, the, the whole law of love. So the gopis are saying, well, you are insisting. The point is that we are not only Brajavasis. We are Brajavasis, but not only that. So, so Krishna may, may ask, but then the gopis, then who are you? Who are you? So they say, Swajana Haridurujam, the last line of this verse, Swajana Haridurujam, Swami's one's own. And of course, even though the concept of parakia, the, the very word parakia is the opposite of swakia, there we find the word swa. Swakia means belonging to one, to one, and parakia means belonging to another. So here the gopis in Parakya seem to be belonging to another, but they are saying Swajana, like saying Swakya. No, we belong to you actually, even though it seems we belong to so many other directions, that's only, you know, for the per divine illusion, for the purpose of enhancing the Rasic experience. So the gopis pronounce this word, Swajana Hridrujam, your own, we are your own. We have a disease in our heart. So we are, we are yours, you are ours. You are, you are a gopa, and we are gopis. Now they start to, 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 to expand on their psychology. You are a gopa, we are gopis. You are the son of Nanda Baba, you are the daughters of Rishavanu Baba, and so many other bhavas and gopas there. And you are so near and dear to us, and you, and we are so dear and near to you, that all the other Brajavasis cannot be compared to us. Of course, they are saying that, we are not being here sectarian and insulting the both in different races. Here the gopis are expressing their subjective, passionate experience in romantic love to Krishna. So they say, we are yours and we are and you are ours. We belong to each other in the most extreme possible way, in every single sense of the term that's the belonging. Mm -hmm. You are our life. Jana, Jana means also life. So Swajana means we are your life, you are our life, basically. We cannot live without you, just as the body can live without consciousness. So that's the, the interconnection and the dependence between one and the other. And of course, we know all the Brajavasis ex express this on some degree of another, but objectively speaking, we also found some gradation there. So for example, when Krishna went to Mathura and Dwarka, all Brajavasis wept in separation, of course, but in one sense, Again, objectively speaking, subjectively everyone will feel my connection to Krishna with Krishna is the best and everyone is strike. Krishna does say. And on, from an objective point of view, it is mentioned that no, no, no other Brajavasi apart from the gopis reached such a brink of death. They did not come to the brink of death as the gopis did. Everyone did, but not at that level. Mm -hmm. So when Krishna, for example, sent Uddhava to Braj, that was specially for the gopis because he knew they are in an extreme state of separation. All of them are, but they are extremely. That's why in the Bhagavad Krishna says to the Gato the Bab Brajam Sumya Pritrona Pritima Baham Gopinam Madbi Yoga Dim Matsanti Sherbimojaya. So he's saying, Oh my dear Uda, Gato the Bab Brajam Sumya, dear Uda, go to Braj, Gato the Bab Brajam Sumya Pritrona Pritima Baha. Try to please my parents and other and other devotees there in Braj. Gopinam madbi yoga dim. And very especially, please try to attend to the gopis plight in separation. Matsandasar bimochaya by delivering my message. So the point that Krishna was well aware, <clears throat> well acquainted with the pain, specific pain of the gopis in their condition. So again, the, go the gopis are 
re gradually, very gradually, not expressing what's in their heart, but Krishna is pressing them to disclose their specific desire more and more. Mm -hmm. So they express it to some extent, but again, they say something and they cover it again without revealing it clearly. That's the nature of love. That's the nature of indirect romantic language. Mm -hmm. What they say is, we have a heart disease, read Ruch in this verse. So they imply you are a very expert doctor, so please give us some remedy <clears throat> to counteract and remove that disease. Jan Nishu Danam means which counteracts such a disease. So they, will, they, they use the word Ruch here, no? Ruch, which means disease. As a result, it, it is said that the commentators say the word is used as a result of a profuse pain in love. Not profuse pain only, but in love. So that's compared to a disease because of the ecstatic pain that it's creating. So some, so the gopis are asking to Krishna, please release the medicine. You know, the, the, the criteria here is, for example, if a sick person comes to a doctor and says, I have a terrible, a terrible pain here in my stomach, whatever, he will not tell the doctor what medicine to prescribe. You fall he will just present the case. The doctor has to select the medicine according to his own diagnosis. But if the patient demands a particular medita med medication, no? I have this pain and you should give me this, the doctor will just be annoyed at his arrogance. No? You are not trained to know mm, what medicine you require, he will say. Mm. So accordingly to this criteria, the gopis are not saying clearly to Krishna, you should give us this to us. They actually imply, you know what medicine to give us. But again, it seems their gopis are asking for them, but actually the one who needs medicine ultimately is Krishna. <laughs> but again, if, if the gopis receive the medicine, Krishna will receive the medicine because the two of them are, the pain of the two is the same, basically. Mm -hmm. But indirect speech moves in this well, mm -hmm. in a crooked way. So the gopis say to Krishna, you know what medicine to give us. We know that you know. We, have full, we are fully sure of that. So give us just a little, well, you were the word manak, a little of the medicine that will alleviate our heart's disease. So here, interesting, they use manak, which means a little. But this request, give a little something. Actually, why they ask a little? Well, many opinions are there. One of them is, generally, that's the custom if one is begging. If one is begging something very valuable. That's the point. If one is, if you are begging, if you are a beggar on one side, and what you are begging is something very valuable, you will ask for a little of that. But we know actually, a little is not what the gopis really meant. They, that won't be enough for a little. We are, they already make that clear. They need the full thing. Mm -hmm. This same idea is expressed in the Gita Govinda in a very nice verse. There it says that <clears throat> Jayadev says, in separation from you. Jayadev is singing to Krishna. In separation from you, Radha makes an armor, a net of petals from the lotuses of her tearful eyes on her heart of hearts, as if to completely shield you from Cupid's arrows that are incessantly falling there. It's a very sweet, charming way of describing Krishna's condition of receiving Cupid's arrows. And Krishna is being fully situated in Radha's heart, and she trying to protect such a vulnerability somehow or other. And, and, and that's what the gopis here are trying to do by begging Krishna a little something. Again, they're trying to save Krishna. So a beggar may approach someone and, and may create some sympathy you know, by saying, just give me a little something. <laughs> But actually, he does not intend to take just a little. That's a famous example of Bamandev. Bamandev approached Bali Maharaj. Say, just a little. Bali say, I have. I can give you whatever you want. You know, a whole rain, a whole rain, a whole country, a whole planet. And Bamandev says, just three footsteps, just a little something. <laughs> but we know what happened after that. You know, those three footsteps became. We're never, we're not enough. Bali Maras didn't know what mom and they say, I don't know what to put my third step. The Bali Maras expressed Admani Vedanam received the feet on his head. So, in the same way, the gopis are following this hmm, traditional tradition, the ancient tradition, if you will. So, they are saying, Give us something, just a little. 
But however, this is not the real desire. They do not really think that a little will be enough. Hmm? They're using the word rid jam here, no? Rid jam means the heart disease. No? So the heart disease, and this is expressed in plural. No? It's not one heart, one disease in one heart. There's no one gopi here. Here we have millions of gopis, uncountable gopis, sankhya. So if they are only asking for a little of that for millions of gopis, I mean, it's not enough. It's not enough for every, every, any single one gopi. <laughs> what to speak of millions? No? So if only one drop of medicine will be given to millions of gopis, actually none of them will be able to have even a trace of it. It will not even touch them. It will even increase their disease. And that's even the, the implication there. No? The gopi thing like this, the, the whole inferno, the whole hell that we are burning in our hearts is raging so fiercely that all the water in the world, sometimes this analogy is, will not be able to put it out to give some idea of such a pita disorder. Mm. Now, for example, if a very dangerous fire, forest fire is burning, and you just go and put a little water, not the necessary level of water, just a little water, what will be the result? The water will act as ghee, making the flames stare, flare still higher. That's the point. So this is the same idea. No? If you just release a little of that, our actually our fire will become bigger and bigger. So if the fire our, if in our hearts, the Gopi says like that. It's like the raging forest fire to constantly increasing. So the real Gopi's desire is not just a little of that something. But Krishna should always be with us. So we can always serve him. Always is always without even the interruption of the blinking as we say <laughs> so although the gopis are not expressing their mood openly they are not saying all this in detail overtly they are in fact saying no? even though we have only prayed for very little you should give the medicine in plenty that's the implication that the the gopis are implying and krishna of course is understanding all this is between the lines but fully understood by both parties and Sridhar Swami, he mentions in his commentary, the sense by saying, Manak, this is give without being stingy. Don't be a miser. Give him full range. So let's go to the last words of the verse, which are Yan Nishudanam. So Yan Nishudanam Shudana, again, in the word Nishudana, means to remove. And Ni has to do with Nishesh Rupa, which is called Nishesh Rupa. The word Nishesh, indicates forever mm -hmm. and implies fully so that which that which is removed does not return nishudana means a full removing no? so that th fully uprooting something that won't there won't be a returning and coming back of that so by the gopis using this specific word nishudana mm -hmm. they are telling krishna please give us a remedy mm -hmm. that will fully destroy our distress forever past present future mm -hmm. and the point is not a little actually but be sure to give plenty of it because there are millions of us gopis and this fire of kama in all of our hearts must be extinguished forever if you only give a little again it will work like ghee and the burning will increase in in, in this connection uh, sri lajiva goswami in his lago vaishnav toshani he mentions that referring to the heart's disease of the gopis this disease has two aspects. He said the first, as with every disease, the first is its symptoms, and the second is the disease itself. For example, if you have a cold, uh, the symptoms will be, well, water coming from the nose, and thick mucus, and maybe headache or fever. And the second aspect, apart from the symptoms, is the disease itself. So when the gopis say, Yanni Shudanam, remove it, completely forever they are implying we want you to remove both aspects of the disease mm -hmm. symptoms and disease itself mm -hmm. and a qualified doctor will do that that doctor will give a medicine which will be able to dispel both the symptoms and the root of the symptoms in the disease itself so <clears throat> so at this point krishna may say to the gopis mm -hmm. remember that Many spurtis are coming in between, many like revelations where 
and Krishna manifest and speak with the gopis. So Krishna will say, okay, very good. No, we are, we are getting clearer now. We are becoming a little bit more specific according to what you want. So what should I give you? Tell me openly what you want. So he keeps insisting to reach to the fullest degree of transparency, if you will. <laughs> so then the gopis, is, they pronounce this last line. No? So Swajjana Hari Drujam Jan You have the heart, we have, you have, sorry, they have, but they're here implying, you have the heart, the heart disease of calm. And that disease has entered our hearts as well. So you should give us some medicine that will reduce it. So Krishna say, okay, what's the medicine? <laughs> what's that medicine? So Gopi say, I go, well, a medicine that may give us some relief. Again, they are not, they don't want to be no, overt. They are not speaking directly. So Krishna will say, but what do you want specifically? So eventually the gopis will say, put your hands on our hearts. So that was what we say at the beginning of the lecture today, but without fully unpacking the implications of put your hands on our breasts, on our hearts. Of course, appear before us, but appear again in a particular context and mood. But again, they are not, this is not being said openly in the verse, because as we already explained in, in many other lectures, uh, in matters of prem, it is inappropriate to, to speak in a direct way, in a direct manner. For example, as we say, if not pro it, will, it won't be proper to say, I don't know, we have brought many sweets and many other delicious food for you to eat. We, no, you told us to bring them, so please enjoy them. I mean, that's on some, some, some certain level of affection. But that's, that won't turn the whole rasa of the, of the thing. No? So similar in matters of prem, if someone is saying, oh, I love you so much, I will die without you, one's prem will be diminished. Those are the laws of prem. So therefore, the, 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 the spirit, the real spirit should be kept hidden. Because if a person's love is of the highest range, of the highest quality, here we are speaking about that, of course, that person will keep his, her love and affection concealed. It won't be like a public ex exhibition. Because if it's expressed directly, love will shrink, will be reduced. So again, the, the Gopi's words, as we are mentioning today, as has been explained by Mr. Chukavarti Thakur and other acharyas, Actually, those words we share today are not in the verses itself, overtly. No, they are no, inwardly, behind the, 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 the official meaning. Why? Because the gopis have kept their real feelings, feelings hidden, or they have expressed themselves in a joking, joking way. But even then, in those cases, sometimes it is said no, that only some... Uh, on some only some bold gopis, direct gopis, outspoken, as you say, can express these words in a direct way. For example, we gave some example, but let's remind about that. Lalita is a very prakar, is an expression for this. Prakar means like bold, direct, spoke, outspoken lady. But Sri Radha is not such bold as, as Lalita. La, Ra, Radha, in comparison, is considered Madhya. Madhya means like moderate, no? in between in the middle. So she cannot directly express her intentions. And Bishaka also is Madhya, but it is said that she's like Mritvi, which is like slight at the same time. And, and someone like Lalita is bold to the extreme extent, basically, you know? so she, to the point that she can even punish Krishna with the harshest of words, especially when she's angry, of course. <laughs> so somehow or other, we, we should be able to reconcile all the varieties of statements by the gopis in different verses and the possibilities of different moods according to the groups and so on. So the point is that everything has been told in one sense, but at the same time, everything is still very covert and concealed due to the arrangement of, of indirect language and divine love. So neither Jiva Goswami, neither Vishwanatra, Kabarti, Thakur, or other Acharya are really fully revealing the gopis' moods. And, and I'm not saying this because of they are lacking in something. My point is that as much as they can reveal that, the point is that what a person can only realize fully these moods by performing bhajan and sadhana in a very deep way. That's the ultimate level of realization. It's not enough to just read the insights of other acharyas because to fully grasp their meanings you have to 
perform the sadhana that they perform, if you will, and reach the insect that they reach. And there we will be able to fully, you know, to, 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 to allow those meanings to be fully revealed in our hearts. But even it is said that if a person engages in very intense sadhana and receives an insect, very clear insect, a fully revelation of these moods, that person, in the face of such a revelation, will be shy. Won't be just willing to open the door and start to shout that to the whole public. That person will keep his her intimate realizations in his heart. We know that's the law. We are not sharing that here and there. These very precise, delicate, intimate things. All the charas, all the swamis in, in our parampara have instructed us not to, not to disclose these topics. So Jiva Goswami himself say very say something very nicely in this connection. He say in his commentary to this section. <coughs> On this point, he already said a lot, but he will say, I will not say more than this. And he instructed the reader by saying, a bhakta should perform sadhana and hari bhajan, and he will realize everything automatically. Like implying, I'm saying a lot, but still some, some other things are, are yet to be revealed, and those things will be revealed as much as one apply oneself to sadhana. So, in this way, all these pastimes have several meanings, hmm? very deep moods and emotions included there. It is actually it is described that the whole the festival of the gopis of the gopis is actually a festival of emotions. That's the name, Babotsava. Hmm? Babotsav. Babotsav means festival. Sometimes you hear Mahotsav, hmm? Abir Bab Mahotsav. But here we are speaking about Babotsav, Baba Utsav, no? the great celebration of their bhajan, of their transcendental emotions. Mm -hmm. So there are many meanings of this verse and, uh, and other verses that have not been discussed uh, in the commentaries. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and they cannot, they cannot be disclosed at the same time. Mm -hmm. to, to the, you know, to disclose confidential subject matter in the presence of many persons, sometimes example is given, no? It's like breaking earthen pots in the midst of a marketplace where hundreds of thousands of persons are present. So the point is, when very confidential topics are spoken to a general audience or to unqualified audience, the sprout of what in the hearts of the audience is injured and the result may be chaos. And that's why Mahaprabhu himself, he only spoke very deep confidential topics only to say in his Leela with four devotees. Rasakata, he only spoke Rasa Kata with four associates, Sarup Dhamadar, Rao Ramananda, Siki Mahiti, and Mahatabi Devi. That was his Antaranga Sangha, or his intimate association for those type of topics. So he's, he's given the example. He's Krishna, he's a Chari Lila. So the rest is apply yourself to bhajan. So in due course, after our sadhana, bhajan are matured. All the details, if you will, the remaining details will automatically manifest in our heart. We won't need to just read and memorize and repeat and have this in our brain. That's not actually full Raganuga Bhajan. <laughs> so by properly, humbly, eagerly embracing our sadhana, our bhajan, the remaining things will manifest. Or, or the things that we already know in theory, but will become alive in our hearts. Because in Sadaka Deha, in the, in, the, in the stage where most of us will be now, the eternal lila of Krishna cannot be fully relished, it is said, uh, during much more time. It, it, can, it can even come only as a spurti, as a, a revelation, very like you know, flashing revelation, till one becomes a siddha, a perfected being, and one can participate on an ongoing way. And of course, to enter in such a land, we need kripa, we need mercy. We need to cry for that. We need to develop some eagerness for that, as Prabhupada will say, to cry. The example is if the, the baby in the mother's, uh, what's the word? On the, well, with the mother. So if, if the baby is not crying, if the baby wants to eat, he will, he will cry, she will cry, and, and that will create some attention. So if, if we are, we may be now in the, not in the mother Maya, Maya Shakti's no? <laughs> place, crying humbly for the grace of the sadhu. So we need to obtain Kripa, 
And for Kripa, we need to go through Kripana. Kripana means to feel ourselves wretched and devoid of, of realization and devoid of grace and feel the necessity to be filled for that. We need to empty ourselves, as you know, to be filled. So in order to, be cre to get Kripa, we need to go through the Kripana experience. <laughs> And, and in that way, we will attract a particular type of sadhu sangha that will nurture our uh, our tiger expe devotional expectations. And that sadhu sangha, do, do not be attached to where that sadhu sangha has well come from. No, Chaitanya Charitamrita says that Krishna bhakti ras bhavitamati kriyatam yadi kutopi labhiti. Since whenever that sadhu sangha, whenever Krishna bhakti ras bhavitamati, whatever Krishna bhakti rasa is being properly represented, if you are really if you have the real eagerness for that, wherever it's coming from, you should be, if you are really eager for that, you won't be asking, well, that's coming from a particular mission. Is he Indian? Is he lady? Is he a man? Is he a guru? Is he a sannyas? I mean, wherever it is coming from, your own eagerness will take you in that direction to take that rasa, to take that kripa. We have to obtain that. That's real greed. No matter where it's coming from, I have to obtain that. I'm greedy for that. So in such a Sangha, we will be hearing Nam, chanting Nam, crying Nam, and gradually Nam, Rupa, Guna, Lila, with all the details that cannot be publicly mentioned, <laughs> will eventually manifest. So that's some external extra inputs for us to continue processing all this content in our daily bhajan. So thank you very much. And tomorrow we'll have the last class of this week and the last we'll be studying the last verse of the Gupi Gita. But next week we will also be having some series of lectures trying to share some afterthoughts and some, some later verses that come after that also are connected to this section. But tomorrow we'll be discussing last verse, which is a little bit longer in every sense. So bear with me and save some a little bit time more time but i promise you will be a very <laughs> fulfilling experience so thank you very much and i don't know if you have any questions today <clears throat> okay so no questions today Lots of things to unpack, keep unpacking, keep unfolding, keep digesting, keep embracing, keep realizing, and keep praying for. So, thank you again to all of you. See you tomorrow. Shri Lagurudev ki jai, Shri Man Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai, Shri Shri Gorada Madhav ki jai, Grantara Shri Mad Bhagavatan ki jai, Shri Gopigita ki jai, Gor Bhakta Vrind ki jai. Gol Priman, Haribo, Vansha Kalpataru, Vishagripa, Sindhu Vyavacha, Patitanam Pavanevio, Vaishnavi Bionamon Maha, Nanta Koti Vaishnava Brindiki Jai. Another Sami Kita.